Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And this video is going to be called Explore to Exploit, because what we're going to do is explore a villain in our database and talk about how we can find information on him and use that information to exploit him going forward. In my opinion, most players that have databases don't really ever do this. They use their database to track their hands, to use the HUD, to look at graphs, replay hands, but they're not really using their database to explore villains. And in pretty much any decent database, as far as sample size is concerned, there's going to be information on villains, and we can use that to our advantage to create better strategies against them specifically so we can increase our win rate against them and, of course, just in general. So in this video, we're going to explore an opponent, talk about how we find an opponent, how we can explore them. Then we're going to talk about the things that I suggest looking for, and also how we can use those findings to create strategies against this person so we can take better lines and, again, increase our win rate. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it, start having some fun, and explore an opponent in our database. Okay, so this database was sent to me by one of my students who was nice enough to let me use it for this video. And all of these hands were played at 50 no limit zoom, and we have roughly 88,000 hands. Now, I do want to make three quick notes here. One, this is not 50 no limit specific. Two, this is not full ring specific. And three, this is not zoom specific. And the reason why I say that is because people will see that these hands were played at this level and then freak out and think, oh, well, if I don't play 15 no limit zoom, I, this doesn't apply to me. And the fact of the matter is that it does, because this process can be used at full ring or six max, it can be used at any limit, it can be used at any speed variant. And that's the really important thing is this process of finding opponents, of exploring opponents, and then exploiting opponents it's all the same thing, it works at all limits, so you don't have to worry if you don't play 50 no limit zoom exactly. So that being said, again we have 88,000 hands, and in order to look at our entire database of players, we go to view stats, cash, if you play cash games, if you play tournaments, go to tournaments, results, and then go to report and change it to player summary. And this is going to bring up our entire database, and if we want to organize it by hands, just click hands, and notice that it shows us on top with 88,000, and then goes downwards from there. So there's a couple notes I want to make first. First and foremost, notice that yes, we have 88,000 hands in this database. The next person has roughly 5, next person after that has roughly 4,000, and then it just starts trickling further and further down from there. Now, if you have a very small database, say something like 20 or 30,000 hands, chances are some of this stuff is not going to be as useful for you, simply because your opponents aren't going to have as big of a hand sample size on them, we're not going to see their whole cards as much, and thus we're not going to be able to really analyze the lines they took with the whole cards they had, and thus it's going to be more difficult. We're going to be doing some guessing and some, some analyzing for sure, but it's not going to be as informed as if we have their whole cards, aka what a bigger sample size is usually going to give us. Another thing to note here is look at every, you know, these are the biggest players in our database as far as hands are concerned, and notice the VPIP and PFR. You know, almost every single one of these players is a tag. We get the occasional nit, someone like this. We get the occasional, maybe if you want to consider them a lag, someone like a 1715. But overall, the average person in here is usually going to be a tag. And that's just kind of typical and standard. Those are the players we're going to have the biggest sample sizes on. And it's important to note that you're usually not going to have a big sample size on fish. Just because fish tend to buy in, they tend to lose money, and then they tend to go about their business and do whatever fish do as hobbies. So because of that, we're usually going to have the biggest sample sizes on regs and players that we play against the most often. And it's actually very helpful in that regard, simply because we do play against these players more often, and if we can analyze their game and increase our edge against them, that's only going to help us in the long run. So because of that, it's one, important to note that the average person here is usually going to be pretty taggy, and then two, this is actually very, very helpful for us because it makes our the work we're doing right here more beneficial. Now, that being said, the person we're going to analyze in this video is this player right here, simply because they have the most amount of hands in our database and are winning. You can definitely analyze bigger players that are losing as well. I'm just going to analyze this guy because he's winning. And also, another thing to note is he is playing a little bit looser. I tend to like to analyze players that do play a pinch loser, and these this is actually going to be more beneficial for 6-max players, 
simply because in six max people play looser on average which means they get to showdown more often which means that we see their whole cards more often which means we can infer what they're doing and kind of make more educated guesses and also have a better idea on how to exploit them going forward so because of that just know that like nits and tags particularly a full ring usually it's going to be tough because you're not going to get a tremendous amount of hands that they went to showdown with but in six max or against lags you're definitely going to get more hands on them and you're going to be able to figure out what they're doing better and that in my opinion is very very important so in order to change the active player AK so we can analyze just this guy, I'm going to go to the report that I'm going to use, and I'm going to go to the players, I'm going to go to choose new player, and then I'm going to type in his name, which you're not going to see. Boop, boop, boom. Just the guy, there he is, okay. Changes to him, and now we're going to start analyzing. So again, he has 4.2 thousand hands, he's up roughly 145, and we're starting to see what we can do from here.